Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll see Miss Ito's life in 2017. If you haven't checked my previous videos, please check them first. On January 5th, a friend of Miss Ito posted a photo of them visiting a shrine in Tokyo on her Instagram. Miss Ito spent the new year of 2016 with Mr. Armark in England, but in 2017, she spent the new year in Japan. On the same day, she shared the trailer of Lonely Death documentary on her Facebook. She says in a comment, I covered Lonely Death's story for Reuters two years ago and realized three minutes is not enough to tell the entire story. Now it's one hour piece. The article she mentions here is this, written by Chris Myers, published on April 1st, 2015. She joined as an additional reporter as well as Mr. Toru Hanai as a photographer. Chris Myers was a video journalist for Reuters based in Tokyo, but sadly passed away after a long battle with an illness on August 1st, 2016, right around when Miss Ito and Mr. Almark were shooting The Lonely Death. Mr. Hanai, who was the photographer of the article, said, This is great. Chris must be proud of you. And Miss Ito replies, Thank you, Mr. Hanai. It took a long time, but it finally took shape. I remember interviewing with you and Chris just like yesterday. If the lonely death issue is originally what Chris covered, and considering the fact that Chris passed away right when she was filming it, I think. I think it'd be more polite to mention Chris's name somewhere, I guess? There's another comment of congratulation from a seemingly close friend of Miss Ito saying, Shiori, finally, only watching the trailer makes me shiver, so looking forward to it. And Miss Ito replies, Thank you, at last. There was another big upset though, I'll tell you next time, lol. When I tell my close female friend, I had another upset, I'll tell you next time, lol. It's 99.9% .9 girls talk about relationships or boys. And by another, it means that there was already a big upset before. The relationship with Mr. Armark might have not been going well since the latter half of 2016. On January 10th, Mr. Armark also announced the broadcasting of the Lonely Death documentary on his Instagram. After this, he traveled around mainly in Southeast Asia, and no photos of Miss Ito were posted until April 2018. I'm not sure exactly when, but it seems that the relationship deteriorated at the end of 2016 and they broke up at the beginning of 2017. On February 28th, Miss Ito shared on her Facebook that the documentary Racing in Kogane Valley was out. She wrote in Japanese, I had a lot of fun every day in the hot jungle. I am planning to go to South America this year again. I have to work on my Spanish. Ms. Ito's book states in March 2017, a journalist, Kiyoshi Shimizu, who she contacted back in 2015, contacted her and said the weekly Shinjo offered to cover the case with Mr. Yamaguchi. They decided to have a meeting, however, she had to go to Colombia for the coverage, so they decided to meet after returning home. Kiyoshi Shimizu is a journalist who is famous for his book in which he accused the police of its sloppy investigation in a murder case. He later appeared on a radio program and said Miss Ito contacted him through a personal route at the end of July 2015. After Miss Ito had a press conference and went public, he frequently tweeted to defend and support Miss Ito on Twitter. But after the tweet on April 14, 2018, He suddenly stopped tweeting about Miss Ito. He was supporting her publicly that much, at least he should have tweeted something when Miss Ito won the civil case. But he was totally silent. It was too abrupt that he shut his mouth about her. It makes me want to ask him gently, oh Kiyoshi, honey, what have you found out? I'll tell you what happened around April 2018 when Mr. Shimizu stopped supporting Miss Ito in the next video. On April 2nd, Miss Ito was in Bogota, Colombia. On April 23rd, she asked for an interview on Twitter about FARC, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. On April 29th and May 1st, the photos of Miss Ito in New York were posted on her friend's Instagram. On the way back from Colombia, she stopped in New York. She says in a book, After returning to Japan, I attended the meeting with Mr. Kiyoshi Shimizu and the editor in chief of Weekly Shinjo. At this point, I already decided to open my face and my full name, but Mr. Shimizu stopped me from disclosing my full name. On May 7th, 
Miss Ito filmed a video of herself talking about the situation in English that later was inserted into the BBC documentary. Today is 2017 May 7th. I'm recording this because I know the truth I have and I claim what happened to me two years ago will be public and I'll. And I do want to do this to talk about truth and ask for justice for the future. Some people think that BBC had been sticking to the unknown woman, Miss Ito, from this time, but I rather think she had already made a plan to sell herself to foreign media as a victim of sexual assault. The BBC documentary filming was apparently taking place in fall winter 2017. And it seems to be decided around the summer when Ms. Ito allegedly was offered to migrate to England by a female human rights group in London. What I've found in the research of Ms. Ito's life so far is that she's a person who has a strong desire to be recognized overseas and live abroad. She's pushy and ambitious. When she wants something, she wants it right away, but not persistent. She's very good at attracting sympathy and getting support from others, especially men. And to get what she wants, she has no qualms to exaggerate, distort, and hide for her convenience. We've seen her 2015 and 2016, and how she was moving vigorously here and there. It almost makes me dizzy just by following all of her trips. With all that enthusiasm, ambition, energy, and charm, getting what you want may not be so difficult. People who succeed in society may have similar characteristics, more or less. In fact, after the press conference with her name and her face open, Ms. Ito started to move around the world more actively. She's actively promoting help for victims of sexual assault, improved legislation, and the spread of sexual education as a rape survivor. Some people may think it's good for society and the public, who cares if she's a real victim or not? But if the social significance is based on the compulsory sacrifice of a man's career, honor, Family and life, it cannot happen in a civilized society. On May 8th, Mr. Yamaguchi posted on Facebook that he received questions from the magazine Weekly Shinjo. Let me translate his post into English and read it in order to be fair. About my scandal article. On the weekend, I received an email from a journalist from a weekly magazine covering my scandal and asking me to answer the questions for this week's issue. I'm currently struggling with eye disease, so I had a hard time reading the small letters, but I did my best to answer the questions as politely as possible. I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of article will be published and how much my answers are reflected. On May 10th, the article about the case was published for the first time in the weekly Shinjo magazine. Mr. Yamaguchi posted on Facebook about it again. This comment of Mr. Yamaguchi is super long, so please bear with it. About the weekly Shinjo's article. Regarding this week's issue of Weekly Shinjo, I would like to speak about my views and coping policy to my friends on Facebook who have been much support and guidance. Due to the nature of the matter, there is a lot of personal content that is irrelevant to my work as a journalist, so please skip this if you are not interested. First, let me clarify the following three points. I have never violated the law. As a result of a strict investigation by the authorities, the final conclusion has been made that there was no illegal activity. I have not been arrested or prosecuted during this process, not limited to this time, I have never been arrested or prosecuted. Again, I have never violated the law. If, as mentioned in the article, I used the so called date rape drug, filmed with a hidden camera, or raped her, then the great Japanese law enforcement or judicial agency should not have overlooked. I provided the authorities with all sorts of evidence, including my personal computer, my tablet, and my mobile device. And after cooperating fully with the investigation, they finally concluded that there was no criminal activity. If you were to be accused of what you didn't do, I'm sure you would do the same as I did. Even after the final conclusion that there was no criminal activity about a year ago, I was aware that this individual was trying to sell this story as a scandal to various media. However, I have nothing to hide, so I have continued to work as a journalist by publishing books and appearing on TV. It's really hard to understand why this article came out after I left the company and started media activities in earnest. In any case, this article will seriously damage my social life, so I will consider decisive measures, including legal actions. About the arrest warrant. 
In the article, it seems that some political force worked and the arrest warrant was suspended. But it is clear as day that it's impossible for me to ask someone about the arrest warrant at all. So let me explain in chronological order. Although it is stated that the arrest warrant was issued in the article, I still have no way of knowing whether or not it was true. The people from the authority never showed or mentioned it. All investigations were voluntary. In March 2015, when I was the chief of TBS Washington bureau, I wrote an article about the comfort stations for the Korean Army during the Vietnam War in Weekly Bunshin. In late April, I was punished by the company for it, and I was ordered to move to the sales department after being dismissed from the Washington bureau chief. Yamaguchi's return to Narita Airport in Japan on June 8th in the article of Weekly Shincho refers to the day when I returned to Japan to start working at the sales department. The article states that the arrest warrant was cancelled just before my arrival in Narita Airport. However, when returning to Japan, of course I did not know that I was the subject of an investigation by the authorities at all. I arrived at Narita Airport normally and I remember heading to the city center with my former boss of the company who came to pick me up. After that, I think it was in the middle of June, I learned about the damage report for the first time when the Metropolitan Police Department officers came to my house. The two officers were very polite and asked me to cooperate in the voluntary investigation. I didn't have anything to hide, so I told them that I would fully comply and all the investigations started. In short, when I returned to Japan on June 8th, I didn't know anything about the damage report or the secret investigation, let alone the arrest warrant. No one can take any action to cancel an arrest warrant who does not even know if it has been issued. About the visit to the US this time. Right now, I am covering stories overseas continuously, starting with the forum in North America on May 1st. In addition to interviewing the US and other countries about the situation in North Korea, I also interview experts and foreign affairs officials regarding Japan US relations to hear their thoughts. In the midst of it, on May 6th, a reporter from Weekly Shinjo contacted me via mobile phone and email and received the inquiries. As a result, I first learned that Weekly Shinjo will publish an article about me. Therefore, it is completely different from the fact that I fled abroad because Weekly Shinjo's article would be uncomfortable for me. It became a long and random sentence. Once again, I would like to express my deep gratitude to all of you who sent me messages of encouragement. I look forward to your continued guidance. On May 19th, Ms. Ito's first press conference was held. On the same day, she submitted a complaint to the Committee for the Inquest of Persecution. The video of the press conference on this day somehow cannot be found, it's all deleted on the internet. The only reason I can think of is that Ms. Ito asserted that the prosecutors dropped charges due to unknown huge power, or she was criticizing that the Diet prioritized the liberation on the conspiracy law in the interview. Mr. Yamaguchi again posted on Facebook about Ms. Ito's press conference. About the press conference regarding the article of Weekly Shinjo. A woman who was the informant of the article about me in Weekly Shinjo had a press conference, so I would like to give my opinion. First of all, I've never violated the law. Therefore, since June of last year, I have sincerely responded to the investigation by the authorities. A detailed investigation based on the evidence, including the issues that the woman asserted at this press conference, was conducted for more than a year, resulting in the conclusion of no persecution. So I am neither a suspect nor a defendant. Of course, all individuals of the non persecutable cases have the right to appeal to the committee for the inquest of persecution, so if the complaint is filed, I will respond in all sincerity as I have until now. On the other hand, the decision not to be persecuted was already announced to all parties in July last year. With this conclusion, I started full scale press activities. If the woman was really dissatisfied with the non indictment conclusion, she would have filed a complaint immediately. Why did she take future actions after I became exposed to the media? And why did the article of the weekly magazine that unilaterally picked up the allegation of the woman come out first? I'm trying to get the big picture to consider the future course of action. After the press conference, Ms. Ito said she received backlash and death threats, so she had to move to London in summer of 2017. She revealed in various interviews that a women's human rights group invited her to live in London, saying, Why don't you stay in a safe place? Has Ms. Ito really migrated to the UK? I don't think she has. I'll show you why. Reason 1. Ms. Ito's room in the BBC documentary filmed in the fall or winter 2017 has her clothes and other items left as they are. 
and it does not look like she had migrated in the summer of 2017. Looking at the video taken on May 7th, you can see that it is the same room shown in the BBC film. In this photo taken around the end of 2018, you can see that it's the same room as the one in the BBC documentary by looking at the kitchen in the back. Also, recently in March 2020, a video about sexual agreement that Ms. Ito narrated was released. The pictures in the BuzzFeed article introduced in the video show that she's living in the same room still now. Reason 2. It must be a long term stay if she was migrated, but in order to stay in the UK for a long time, as in other developed countries, it is necessary to pass the strict visa acquisition process. To begin with, the whole incident with Mr. Yamaguchi happened because it's so hard for her to obtain the visa in the US. The types of visas that foreigners can obtain for long term stays in the UK include investor visa, entrepreneur visa, global talent visa, long term work visas, short term work visas, etc. It can't be a family visa that Ms. Ito has. Also, an investor visa and entrepreneur visa require proof of funds. Ms. Ito was renting her room on a private lodging site, which means she didn't have the funds. And the global talent visa is given to talented and promising individuals in specific sectors. In the summer of 2017, she wasn't globally famous yet, so not applicable. You need to be employed by a licensed sponsor to apply for a general work visa. She claims herself as a freelance journalist, so not applicable. The charity worker visa might be the only possibility, but this is a visa for unpaid voluntary work in the UK sponsored by a charity group licensed by the UK government. She was working appearing in various media, plus, this visa allows you to stay only up to 12 months, so not applicable either. Naoko Hashimoto, working on refugee and forced migration issues for the past 15 years, wrote this in Half Post. I do not know the details of Ms. Hiyori Ito's personal migration course, but generally, in such a case, it is possible that the UK government accepts her under humanitarian protection system. The humanitarian protection system in the UK gives a permit to stay to those who do not apply to the definition of refugees as stated in the 1951 convention, but there is a real risk of serious harm if they return to their home country. Recently, in a magazine column, she revealed that she kept her apartment in Tokyo for all of this time. And now she lives there, not being able to go back to London due to the lockdown for the coronavirus. So it's obvious that she didn't and does not have any real risk of serious harm even when she returns to her home country. Then, with what visa is she staying in the UK? With the standard visa visa, you can stay for up to a maximum of 180 days within the 12 month period. It's one of the longest in the developed countries. Perhaps Ms. Ito just frequently enters and leaves the UK with a tourist visa and stays at a friend's house. Reason 3. In a recent magazine column, she said she was living in a shared house with a friend in London who's pregnant and has to give birth without the support of a friend nor the parents. Hannah a k v i l i n who produced the BBC2 documentary about Ms. Ito and also co founded Hanashi Films together with Ms. Ito, seems very close to her. Hana is from Sweden, so it makes sense that her parents won't be able to support her labor. I won't say in detail to protect their privacy, but Hana's partner is the CEO of an online payment company based in the UK. So I don't think Hana needs a flatmate for financial reasons. Maybe Ms. Ito stays in a guest room of Hana and her partner's apartment whenever she's in London. She keeps an apartment of her own with lots of stuff in Tokyo, and if she stays in a guest room of her friend's apartment in London, I don't think people would call that migrating to the UK. On September 21, 2017, the Tokyo 6th Committee for the Public Inquest of Persecution judged the case as non persecutable. Ms. Ito was in Tokyo, being filmed for the BBC2 documentary Japan's Secret Shame. On September 23, Mr. Yamaguchi posted a comment on Facebook. The decision of non persecutable was made. As many people are aware of in various media reports, the Committee for the Inquest of Persecution decided non persecutable regarding the case in which the female individual lodged a complaint on May 29 in response to the decision of no indictment issued in July last year. By this, the case is completely closed and confirmed the non indictment. Although I refrained from offering information until the non indictment was finalized based on various judgments, many people sent messages of encouragement and support while keeping silent. Thank you again for your support. 
On the other hand, during the same period, there were quite a few media, politicians, reporters, and commentators who repeatedly made the assertion that I was a criminal. In the noise that is not based on the facts, I am relieved that 11 judges who were selected from the general public carefully examined all the evidence and testimony, and as a result, the non indictment was confirmed. I learned a lot from this turmoil. I would like to promote verification and learning with everyone while gradually releasing information. On September 28th, Ms. Ito filed a civil lawsuit against Mr. Yamaguchi to the Tokyo District Court. On October 18th, she published Black Box. October 23rd, Ms. Ito held a press conference at the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. October 26th, Mr. Yamaguchi published an article in Monthly Hanada titled To Miss Shiori Ito Who Sued Me, and he restarted the journalist's activity. December 5th, the first oral pleading of the civil trial was held. Ms. Ito attended being filmed for the BBC2 documentary, while Mr. Yamaguchi didn't attend. From around here, she starts appearing in various articles and interviews of foreign media. I'm sure 2017 was a memorable year for Ms. Ito, in which her name and face spread all over the world. Of course, it's true that she received many online bashing and criticism, but she's not the only one who's being harshly criticized. Some of the mean comments against Mr. Yamaguchi are even more severe. It seems they think any kind of inhumane abuse is permissible to a dirty rapist. In contrast with the fact that the criticism against Mr. Yamaguchi calling him a rapist is only based on Ms. Ito's claim, the criticism against Ms. Ito calling her a liar is mostly based on the contradictions in her own words and deeds. Recently, recording tapes of Amber Heard and Johnny Depp leaked, and it seems more people are now supporting Johnny. But before, Amber was complaining about how she received backlash for speaking up against domestic violence, just like Ms. Shiori Ito. In the next video, we will see Ms. Ito in 2018 when she won a silver award for her first ever directed documentary and also met another talented filmmaker, Mr. Okamura.